Welcome friends. Today I will be using this photo for my inspiration of this country landscape I found on Paint My Photo website. I've started with a dark umber color to begin mapping out some of the darkest values in the painting. I'm going to use very warm colors to create my underpainting. You may wonder, what is an underpainting? It's a way of quickly getting down the shapes and values with an impressionistic mood and colors. And I'm using 400 UART grade paper for this piece. And I'm going to be using bold, warm colors for my base underpainting. You may associate an underpainting as a wet technique, but today I'm trying something new. And once I have all my colors mapped out on my paper, I will blend my underpainting colors with just a piece of paper towel. In order to get my painting colors to really pop, um, I'm going to start with complementary colors. When painting a landscape painting, most landscapes are greens and blues, so the complementary colors would be in the orange and red values. I use broad strokes to map out my shapes before scrubbing in the pigment into my paper. One thing that I love about UART sanded paper is that it can take several layers of pastel color without filling in the tooth of the paper too quickly. I am looking for an intense blue sky, so I'm not adding a complementary color here. Orange is the complementary color for blue, which is good for a warm afternoon sky but I'd like to keep this sky on the cooler side. It's good to have a color wheel handy. It will show you the primary and secondary colors for matching your pastel colors. So I often choose not to use uh, complementary underpaintings for my skies to avoid the possibilities of mudding it up Now I'm ready to blend our pigment of colors into the pastel paper. I'm going to use some paper towel for this. I'm just going to fold it so I have a good um, padded layer without any creases in the area I'm uh, rubbing the pastel in. I will speed this process up just a little bit as I blend the colors. So now the magenta colors represent the trees in the distance and the darker umber color will represent the area where there's heavy shade uh, created by the trees and bushes. Then as we move to the tall grasses. The orange color will represent the lighter areas of the grasses where the sunlight is casting onto the grasses. The grasses in the foreground are not in direct sunlight, so I've added some red to darken the area in the foreground. Be sure to have a clean piece of paper towel as you move on to the next area. You will accumulate pastel dust as you scrub the areas into the paper. It's a good idea to tape your paper to a board so that you can tap off the dust when needed. But in this case, I'm working directly on the surface of my table and it's taped down to the 
table where I can't uh, shake it off. So I am blowing off some of the dust as I work. But I'm also wearing a face mask as I work to avoid inhaling the loose dust uh, that enters the air. So this is our first layer of our underpainting. By scrubbing the colors into my paper and removing the excess pastel, I have a very thin layer that won't smudge into the new layers that I apply over it. I like to use a small piece of the UART sanded paper to sample the colors I, I'm using in the painting. I have started out by using the uh, colors from my set of new pastels, which is the name of the product. I've selected a dark umber color to begin developing some of the shadowed areas in the trees. I'm also using a very dark blue for some of the darker shadowed areas. I'll add some dark umber along the path where the grasses are in the shadows. I'm thinking I need greater contrast between the dark values and my lighter values. So I've switched to a very dark blue for these areas that are in the shadows and I will also use a very blue green uh, pastel color for some of the foliage of the trees. I'm going to add a very dark maroon color to the grasses in the left side of the landscape and now I'm going to lightly blend some of this color together. It's a good idea to wear some sort of plastic glove while doing this because the UART sanded paper is rather abrasive and can give you blisters. These finger covers actually work quite well for blending the pastel. So now we have some really good texture building in our landscape. I still have a lot of tooth to the paper and can continue to build several more layers of color. I'm going to add some light purple to the distant tree line. The sunlight is being cast onto our distant tree line. So I'm adding some bright yellow to the top of these trees. I'm going to begin blending some of this color together just using my fingertips to create some of the warm undertones of the underpainting. At this point, I'm not adding any details to the painting. I'm just developing the rich warm colors that will be a part of this total underpainting process. I'll blend some of this dark blue and the maroon color to complete the left side of the painting. I want to begin developing some of the grasses. I'm using a yellow ochre color for this area. I'm primarily using 
vertical strokes to fill in some of this uh, area of the tall grasses. I'll add a little bit of the dark greens and blues to the path in the distant field. I'm going to blend this area a little bit with some more paper towel. And you can see some of the depth of field beginning to develop. I'm going to add some light blue to the sky area and blend it with one of my foam applicators. I really like these foam tipped applicators. They work so well in small areas. And you can buy these on uh, Amazon. And I'll be sure to leave some links in the description area for some of the supplies that I use for my pastel paintings. I'm adding a little more light blue to the skyline and a richer uh, shade of blue to the top of the sky. I'm going to add some very dark green to some of the grassy areas and I will also add it in the middle of our path. I'm going to use a slate blue to start adding some of the shadows that are overlapping the pathway. I'm going to blend some of these shadows just using my fingertip to push some of the pigment into the paper. I want the shadow to be darker along the very edge of the pathway. I want to define the path as it exceeds into the distance. I'm going to lighten the path here on the right side with some very light yellow. And I'll start blocking in some of the highlights being cast from the direction of the sunlight. The sunlight is strongest here at the edge of the tall grasses, so I'll blend this a little bit. I still want to, to darken the shadow along the edge of the path a little bit more and blend it lightly. And I also want to develop the grasses that are growing down the center of the path a little bit. These grasses here in the distance will be a darker shade as it's part of the shadowed area of the painting. I'll add a few more dark marks to our pathway and blend it a little bit, but this completes the base layer of our warm underpainting uh, technique. Mm -hmm. 
I'm using my pastel pencil just to get a feel for some of the tree trunks and branches in the background. I'm going to begin developing the trees in the background to develop some depth and separation between some of these layers. I've switched to a green pastel to develop some of the low um, bushes here in the distant landscape. I'm using some dark blue to create some of the separation between the trees in the background. I'm going to use my pastel pencils to begin uh, developing some of the tall grasses. These grasses are in the shade, so are a darker shades of greens and blues over the maroon base. going to switch to the grasses on the right side of the painting and again I'm going to use a lot of my pastel pencils to create some of the texture and slowly build the layers to create a more realistic feel to the uh, grasses. Before I finish the grasses with highlights and shadows, I'm going to add the sunlight shining in the pathway. That way I can determine where I need the highlights in the tall grasses. I'm going to add some of the soft shadows and highlights that have formed across the dirt pathway. Now I can add more of the cream color highlights, um, some light orange and greens to develop the texture and height of some of the grasses. I hold the pastel pencils very lightly as I develop some of the grasses and texture that's being formed. We don't want our grasses to be straight lines, but we want them to fall where they will in a more natural manner. I'm going to add some more light blue to my skyline to complete the upper portion of the painting. Next, I'll be able to finish developing the trees in the left side. I'm going to overlap some lighter green trees over the background trees to create some depth and perspective. 
you can already see the development of the depth by just adding these few elements. The contrast of the light trees appears to have come forward and the trees in the back to recede. Now that I move forward with larger groups of trees and shrubs, the perspective and depth transforms the landscape. I'm going to add some dark blue underneath these bushes to create some shadows and depth in the field. I'm going to refocus on these background trees to apply some more of the local colors. In the later stages of my painting, I do tend to jump around a lot and I don't necessarily complete one section of the painting before I move on to the next one. However, I do save the final details and highlights for the very last step of my painting. Here I'm going to sharpen some of the light reflections in the sandy path and reestablish some of the shadows that are crossing over the path with a little smoother blending. I have totally deviated from my reference photograph, but I love experimenting with my pastels and composition. One thing about pastels is that they're very forgiving. If you're not happy with one step you've done, you can easily change it and modify it. It's not uncommon to have 10 to 12 layers of pastel in a painting, and I contribute that to using paper like this UART sanded paper. I am switching to a light lime green color to create some highlights of light being cast onto the trees and bushes. To finish these trees, I'm going to use a little bit broader strokes with a darker green to match the local colors. So now I'm just adding a few details to the painting. Sometimes it's good to step back for a while and view the painting to see what you may have missed or what it may need. And sometimes it could take a day or two of rest before you have fresh eyes to see what's needed. So this completes this demonstration on how to paint dramatic color in your landscape using a warm underpainting technique. I hope you have enjoyed this demonstration and please feel free to leave a comment below and don't forget to press the like button. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications of all my new video lessons.
Thank you for joining and see you next time.